This video is about the development process and the IDEs. Because as developers, we of course want to, well, program. And this is where we should spend the most time in. And this is probably also the task you as developers enjoy the most, right? So let's start with the IDE. Whatever IDE or editor you're using, it doesn't even matter. Um, I will showcase IntelliJ here, but you can equally well take any other IDE. It doesn't even have to be Java, whatever you are using. Um, the IDEs in general are quite powerful. So first of all, before you write and do too much by hand for yourself, everyone then take a look at all the features your IDE has or some new features like tip of the day, look into the blocks of the IDEs, what can be done in a better way. And this is mostly true for refactoring and code generation. And of course, all the tooling all around the IDE itself, like database access, build tools, application servers, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of stuff built into your IDE. So why not just use it, right? Because it's there anyway. But let's start um, with, with something just uh, with a sample class, a class to show you. So what I just said, um, there are a lot of code generation features you, you could use, like getters and setters and all the uh, all this stuff. Don't write this ever uh, yourself equals and hash code method. It's, it's the same story, especially true for hash code. So don't uh, get that wrong and to override delegate methods and so on and so forth. And as I said, um, every, every now and then look into um, some refactoring features, what is available from your IDE. I, for example, I um, personally just learned about the replace inheritance with delegation feature, which is really nice where you uh, have inherited from a class, but actually you wanna delegate to the class. So have an instance of that class in your object and then delegate to it. And actually you can use that feature so it will extract all the methods and then put the methods into the new class which uh, will be moved and then call them just from your um, from your class itself. And all this stuff which are no brainers and can be well quite error prone if you do it manually can be done by your IDE. And the same, um, the same is true if you have code generation for more sophisticated stuff, not just the getters and setters. You can use builder patterns and all all these kind of ideas are probably done by your IDE, IntelliJ, for example. So why not just use them, right? The other very helpful thing for stuff you are writing all the time is live templates. There are a lot of live templates already included in your um, in your IDE for all the typical cases like methods and so on and so forth. But you probably, depending on which technology and specifically which framework you're using, you want to have some live templates for yourself. For example, what I always use is just at inject, like, like this, just because of the correct import and, well, just the typing. Because I have to write this so often, then this is way faster, even if it's just, um, just a few characters plus the import. But it's so faster to um, get a live template with the correct import if you write it often enough. Same is true for the entity manager for Java EE or a post construct method or a pre destroy method or a test method. Or no, we already had that. There's so many live templates that I always always forget how many I have. Or the before and after methods of JUnit and so on and so forth. And these are just example. I'm examples I'm always using when coding, uh, mostly with uh, Java EE. Same is true for JaxRS and so on and so forth. But you get the idea. No matter which technology you're using, if it's an import and if it's um, a, a template a format of a method or something you always have to write in a similar way just reflect what you're doing the whole time what you're typing the whole time and try to find 
a live template for this, even for the most basic things like at inject, because I type it so often that it's helpful to have a template for this. And um, IntelliJ is really helpful by, by, by also telling you wh what it's doing and so on and so forth. So this is something I found quite useful myself. Um, what else is there? So as I said, there are way better examples to showcase all of the possibilities way better that I could explain right now, but just to give you an idea what can be done. What I personally find um, quite interesting and quite helpful is, it sounds boring, but breakpoints and tests. Because we as developers, when we have some kind of special problem or bug, um, we tend to just, okay, let's print something, let's output log system out something to get the idea to just understand what's happening. But actually debugging is more helpful in most of the cases. And this is especially true when you're in, in some scenario where it's not obvious to debug. For example, your software is running on an application server, running on some server remotely, or your application is on an embedded device, running somewhere else which is not internally in your IDE and you say okay it's not uh, possible or not easy no actually it's very easy to debug this as well you can remote debug stuff try to look into remote debugging with JMX and you can even remote debug through SSH so if your system or your software is somehow reachable then you can probably debug it directly from your IDE Having the source code there and then the IDEs can make the connection through the source code and you can step through as if that stuff would be running in your IDE, which is helpful. And so this is actually possible for, as I said, application servers over SSH. I once um, even debugged the Maven process when I wrote a Maven plugin. So there's actually a Maven debug command available for well, I maybe should show this, even debug. That also does the same thing, starting and then waiting for somebody to connect on that port to debug the process. Of course, over SSH, the port has to be reachable. And the same is true for application servers. It has to be started then with the debug setting. But of course, you can write scripts for this. And then writing a script, starting application server, for example, and connecting with the IDE. If you have your application server locally, then of course, you could um, run it from the IDE equally well. These are really good by now to um, include all kind of application servers. So all major IDEs make use of this. I mostly use the command line to um, build projects because it's faster and shouldn't should not make a difference. Um, but you can also equally well include it in your IDE. And having that said for breakpoints, um, if you're writing a test with um, some code in it, what I personally find quite interested are um, both conditional breakpoints that only be, are triggered if some condition you can write here in your code matches. For example, well now we don't have any we don't have any other thing, but let's say string hello then extract that as a parameter and now for example we say hello equals something and then only on this condition it will be triggered and the same is true for disabled and enabled breakpoints so actually if you think of a more complex scenario which is harder to debug where you have an algorithm and only in some sub path you want to see this what's happening because there is a bug somewhere and then you can disable a subsequent um, um, breakpoint so it's not be triggered before and then only if a parent um, breakpoint for example with a condition this is a typical uh, scenario has been triggered then it's being enabled and then it will be triggered as soon as the code passes and this helps you a lot to get where you want to be faster without having to need needing some um, debug logging and without needing to step over hundreds of um, breakpoint triggerings. So this can help you and the, as I said, the IDEs are really powerful 
this. So try to look at all the features. You, as you can see, you can do a lot of stuff there. Once in a while, you might need it. And this helps you to be way faster than trying to manually debug and understand a problem via log sense on and so forth. This was what helped me quite a lot. And well, for tests, um, I well, I hope everybody is, is writing a lot of tests, so that shouldn't need any any explanation. Um, what is quite helpful is, of course, the test integration in your IDE, so you don't have to do much uh, context switches, but getting feedback immediately, because this is another thing when you want to be productive and you want to develop and focusing on what you're trying to do you don't want to be distracted and you don't want to wait too much so if you're writing something and then you have to do a hundred manual steps to ship your software somewhere debug it maybe or running some tests on that this takes a lot of time and it takes some energy and distracts you from your actual problem so of course run the tests in the ide as possible try to get fast feedback and try to have acceptance tests, for example, for enterprise applications, try to have automated tests as much as possible. And I actually recorded uh, several videos and did several talks about this topic, acceptance tests, because it's, well, in real world projects, not done in my eyes enough. And there are always some excuses why they are not doing acceptance tests and automated tests, especially for end-to-end -end tests, including uh, REST services, service calls, database, and so on and so forth. But having that said, you want to do this as a developer because then you can, first of all, test your own stuff without too much effort. Once you have these tests, you don't have to rely on a QA department that tell you, oh, your code is broken again. Well, you can test this upfront and make sure it's working actually, or that at least for a high probability it's working because you tested all the major use cases yourself and you at the end of the day ship better quality right so try to do this in an automated way and having that said just one word on programming and designing tests again to make sure your tests and your test code especially is written in I would say a similar or a similar high quality as your production code. Having that said, you should not forget good design patterns and good practice of programming when writing tests. Of course, your test code doesn't end up in production, but you will be way more productive and you will end up with way more maintainable tests if you do so. Um, for example, I recorded um, a video how to design and implement um, integration tests up front in the past but just to sh uh, give you a brief example again so this is for example an, ex uh, an acceptance test that tests a rest service that does some printing and it has some subsequent um, backends that are called by an external system and so on and so forth it does a lot of stuff internally but don't go and write and copy um, paste your way around violating the don't repeat yourself principle by doing all this calls and stuff that has to be done in line rather than think of the design at first and try to do several layers of abstraction and while developing for for example if you have a more sophisticated problem and a non-trivial stuff then it's not just true for tests, this is actually true for everything. We as, we as developers tend to you know, get into the code as much as possible because we enjoy it. But sometimes you even may want to use pen and paper first, or at least the editor to plain text something, to get the idea done and to get a better idea in a more abstract level what you actually want to achieve before just going really deep down into the details what you're trying to do. For example, what, what helped me quite a lot when I write a more complex method, a, co a complex algorithm, to write the method and then write everything that needs to be done, all steps in comments first, and then write it on that high level, and then maybe generate stops for the comments, method stops that are empty first, and then in the method stops do the subsequent things. And then at the end, just implement something, implement everything, but that you have the concepts first. 
And by the way, what's what's actually quite nice if you start with comments, like inline, for example, this started with comments as well, create this and that and then upload, verify and verify it's this, then change something on the uh, back end and then verify it's actually something else right now. If you start with comments, like what you have to do, then you don't, you are not dragged into the details too early and you keep the whole picture. And also if you have comments, this is actually quite, quite helpful, then just do not, do not keep the comments, the, uh, remove the comments, but you have a pretty good idea of what can be a good method name actually, because this is what you wanted to do here. Your comment was what you intended to do. And this uh, helped me sometimes on really complex stuff do not deep dive too, too early, but think what you want to do, actually. And that's basically it for developing and, and the IDE. So these are most uh, my most important recommendations I have. Another very helpful, uh, no, actually another very important thing is the times you want to spend. Because as developer, as I said, you want to program as much as possible and try to remove all the distractions and try to remove the waiting time. And the same is true if you build a project, you don't want to wait too long. First of all, that was my last video, you want to automate stuff so you don't want to do a lot of manual steps. And then you also do not want to wait for too long, right? This is true for tests, especially when you have a lot of long running tests try to think once in a while, okay, how can I make this faster? Is every step possible? Can I group something together? For example, do I do a lot of in enterprise projects, very often the case embedded container testing, which can be replaced with real end to end testing on a mocked system, but on a real application server. Can I rewrite some tests? Can I parallelize something and so on and so forth. Um, as a rule of thumb, I sometimes, because there are arguments about how long a build process should be, if it should be in seconds or minutes, I say definitely count in seconds, don't count in minutes, that's way too long. And as a rule of thumb, I would say if you can like start any longer running process and take yourself a cup of coffee and take a relaxed nip of your coffee, then this is fine. Actually, I was lying, it's tea. But if you can stand up and go and make yourself your co a coffee while you're waiting for that process, that's so long. That's not acceptable. This is my personal rule, uh, rule of thumb while developing. So these were the most important things I had to say about developing and the IDE and IDE features. Of course, d depending on what you are doing, there are way more other things, but these are my recommendations and inspirations that hopefully helped you a bit.